And welcome everyone to another edition of 90.9 WJB Show. Just checking in. I'm your host, Marcus Sims. And of course, we'd like to let everyone know in the Tennessee Valley what's happening with special events, activities, organizations, or people we just think you need to be in the know about. We are powered by 90.9 FM and also by WJB.org. Now, in case you're like me, I'm probably like the only person walking the planet Earth who has not seen whether it's on the stage or in the film or on TV, Dream Girls. Well, you've got a huge opportunity coming up very soon to check out Dream Girls being put on by Theater Huntsville. And we've got the director of the local, the Tennessee Valley version that's coming here very shortly. We're going to talk dates, Dream Girls, everything you need to know about Dream Girls and much, much more. So please welcome our special guest to just checking in, Miss Sierra Hammond. Sierra, how are you doing? I'm doing pretty good today. The sun is shining. I can't complain. Can't complain. Now, um, thank you so much for joining us here on this uh, special edition of Yo Just Checking In. Now, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself before we get to talking about Dream Girls. And uh, we also know that you're a part of um, Opera Huntsville, if I'm correct. But I am. Let's, let's talk. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay, sure. Um, I am originally from Dallas, Texas, and with that coming from uh, the South, that well, that portion of the South, naturally, I'm a Cowboys fan, so uh, that's something that's very important. We won't hold that against you. We won't hold that against you. <laughs> Um, I, I sing, um, I've been singing probably my whole life, if you ask my parents. Um, I went to Oakwood University, and I graduated with a voice degree from there, and then I went on to the University of Tennessee in Knoxville, so go volunteers for that. And now I'm here at A&M, and I'm having a blast um, teaching the young minds about uh, classical music, and not just that, but how music can be transferred into any other genre, and um, I just love porn into the students here awesome awesome now let's uh, now um we, we know you're on a busy schedule because you're going to be singing by the time that our listeners uh or viewers see this uh just to let everyone know you got a big gig also coming up at the city council where you'll yes. be singing the national anthem so um yes. not, not to take up a lot of your time but can, first of all congratulations on that gig because it's on Huntsville Music Month as well, and there's so many right. positive and awesome things that are happening. So congratulations on that, Ann. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's it's a great opportunity. I love to uh, make sure that we're spreading music in our community. And uh, I am also the production manager for Opera Huntsville. And so our goal is to make opera accessible and make sure that people of all walks of life have the opportunity to enjoy all types of music. And so I'm doing that over there with Opera Huntsville. I'm also working with Theater Huntsville with Dream Girls. I'm at a and and it's just music is part of my life. It is who I am and I just love to spread it. Now let's jump right to it. Tell us about Dream Girls. Educate me and maybe those two other people <laughs> that I'm familiar, <laughs> I, and, I, and I, I talked to you about this briefly. But um, I, I'm familiar with it. I, I know that it's been out for quite a while. Um, mm -hmm. I, probably when the original dropped, you probably weren't born. I was just a wee little Marcus at that point. Um, but uh, we know, of course, there's been um, the modern version that featured Beyonce and Jennifer Hudson. Mm -hmm. And of mm -hmm. course, it's been a traveling um, um, presentation that's going on. But tell us what we need to know about Dream Girls. Sure. So Dream Girls, it's such a historic show. Um, it won six Emmys, well, not Emmys, Tonys, I should say. And there were some really, really important people in the uh, in the original cast. Um, Loretta Devine was in the original cast. Jennifer Holliday was in the original cast. Uh, and so there were so many people that um, Cheryl Ralph as well, as everyone knows as Moesha's mom. <laughs> and so right. there's so many people that have shaped this musical and also a lot of the music that is in the musical, there it's it's in our everyday lives that you may not recognize. Like we are a family, like a giant tree reaching up to the sky. Like that is from Dream Girls. And it's an all black show and it features black artists. And it is something that I'm just so excited that Huntsville has decided to showcase because so many times 
art that specifically highlights uh, Black people is pushed to the side. And so the fact that Theater Huntsville saw fit to highlight this musical, even with the fantastic music and sought out the Black leads, is something that it just blows my mind. And I'm glad that we're here in 2022 and able to do that. Now, and I think it's incredible because, um, as I mentioned, Dream Girls is by no means is it new. It's been around for quite a while now. Right. Mm -hmm. But why do you think it's still everyone still loves dream girls people still flock to see dream I girls why is it so important i think it's when music is good it's good i don't think it, it can be it can just transcend time like i mean i still play a lot of michael jackson's music people may say oh well, that's old i'm like it's not that old it's if music is good it's good and this musical has so many catchy lines the the characters you can relate to they are still inherently indicative of what it means to be black in America, and especially in a time when Motown was coming up and it kind of mirrors the different things that was happening in that company at the time. And so people can relate to it. And if you like the music, you can relate to it and a piece becomes timeless that way. True, true. Now tell us about some of the cast and the crew that are involved with uh, Dream Girls. We know, uh, I'm sure some are affiliated with different colleges and organizations. So tell us a little bit about the people that you're working with on Dream Girls. Sure. So as you know, with Theater Huntsville, it's a community-based organization. It's a nonprofit. And so everybody is welcome to audition and come through for any of their shows. And for this particular piece, there have been a lot of uh, community people that have never been in a show before. Um, we have uh, Jordan Chill City Moore, as he likes to be called. He's in this. Um, uh, Trishanda, she is in the, she's also in the... Uh, production of The Wiz that Alabama a and is putting on as well. And so she's doing double duty, going to Dream Girls rehearsal, going to The Wiz rehearsal as well. We have DeKendra Jackson. She's one of my former students. She's an AM grad. There's just a lot of people that have not uh, necessarily been in the forefront in Huntsville, but have always been involved in the musical aspect. Uh, so there is our, our fantastic stage manager, Cassie Robinson. We have the costumer, Stephanie Hyatt, who the costumes are beautiful. She has done so much research into the time and the decades to make sure that it is historically accurate and that the, the actors and the dancers have movement, but it still doesn't take away from the beauty of the costumes. When when she shows me something like, look what I found, it just blows my mind. And so having all the different people come together and make sure that this show is a success is just fantastic. It's been such an enjoyable experience to work with. Awesome. And we want to remind everyone, Dream Girls will take place September the 16th through the 18th and also September the 22nd through the 25th at the BBC Playhouse. Now, for more information, 256-536. 0807, or you can go to um, the website that's thtix.com, basically theaterhuntsvilletickets.com, uh, more or less. But give them a call, Google it. If you know, if, if, if all else fails, go. Google it. Right. Now, let's talk, Sierra, let's talk personally, uh, but we'll aim it at you for a few moments. Okay. Yeah, at you. Um, who are, um, how did you kind of touch on a little bit? Um, what role did your family and the people around you play to get you so involved in the arts and especially music? What role did they play? Oh, so much. My mother plays the piano and she writes music. And so <clears throat> I grew up in the church and anytime that she had to go play for a church, she would drag me and my siblings up. The, they, they didn't have anybody to do special music or if they didn't have anybody to do song service. It was me and my siblings. We were up there. My mom's on the piano. And we were the entertainment for that church service. And it just happened all the time. Anytime my mom would write a new song, she's like, come on, guys, come sing this song. And that's how we got started. And I just really never stopped singing. Uh, when I got to Oakwood, I was a double major and music won out. And I finished that degree. And I was like, you know what? I 
think I want to continue on. And so my family has always been encouraging. Um, they're always wanting to make sure that I go farther and do more things, especially when I got into directing. Uh, they were very, very excited. And it's just such a blessing to be involved with a family that loves not only me, but the art form that I've chosen to do as a career. And so my family is, I, I couldn't ask for a better one. Now, who are some of the music, the people musically that influence you? Um, it seems as if the, um, you run the gamut of the music style. I, I heard you um, uh, recently, I guess it's this summer, when you were um, singing, if I'm correct, Porgy and Bess. Right. Um, mm -hmm. Which was mind-blowing. If you get an opportunity to see Sierra sing, mind-blowing. Um, that's probably like Thank the second you. or third time I've ever witnessed anyone sing opera, so I have to give you uh, major props for that. But um, who are some of your musical influences that help shape who you are? I think I have to split it up by genre. So for um, classical music or opera, I would have to say Leontine Price, the best soprano to have ever graced this earth, period. There's no comparison to her. Uh, the last time that she performed at the Metropolitan Opera in New York, she had a standing ovation that lasted 42 minutes. Mm -hmm. It was just fantastic. Um, she's in her 90s now, and I want to, want to, want to meet her before she passes. And I just, I, I, she's just fantastic. If we're talking about jazz, I got to hit on my girl, Ella Fitzgerald. She is also the best jazz singer to have ever graced this earth as well. She's also the first person ever to have won a Grammy, which I think that was incredible. She just happened to be alive at the time when the Grammy started and she was nominated and she won. I, that's mind blowing. So those two ladies particularly are my favorite. I also have to mention Jill Scott. If I'm driving down the road and you hear me bumping music, it's probably Jill Scott. Mm -hmm. I love all, anything she does. I've got all her albums. They're fantastic. I want to see her in concert one day. If we, if we're talking about those, those ladies, I would say those are my top three at the moment. Cool. Now, um, uh, uh, of course, this is WJB Show. Just checking in. I'm your host, Marcus Sims, and the topic we're talking about: Dream Girls. And hopefully, that you and your family and friends will check out this special event taking place by our friends at Theater Huntsville, taking place September the 16th through the 18th, and also September the 22nd through the 25th at the VBC Playhouse. Got to ask you, and you got to um, tell us a little bit more about Opera Huntsville. Sure. Opera Huntsville, we're the premier opera hunts, we're the premier opera organization here in the Tennessee Valley in Huntsville, the Madison area. And we are trying to make opera accessible. Uh, sometimes people think of opera as people dressing up and it's stuffy and somebody screaming at you for three hours and you don't know what's happening and it's confusing and we're like that's not what opera is at all. What I tell my students is that opera is basically a soap opera to music. Something's always happening. The tenor is mad at the soprano and the soprano is in love with the baritone and then somebody dies and then but there may not really be dead and then there's a big fight scene it can be so exciting and there's music behind it there's a chorus the costumes are elaborate the set design is fantastic and that is something that we want to bring to the area we want people to get excited about this art form that people may not completely understand we also take it into different parts of town like we've sung at a winery before at robin's winery we've sung at fractal brewing project and so we take these organ well we take these performances to these places so people can hear it in a non-traditional setting. And so that is something that I really, really enjoy about the company, not just having one, one set of patrons, but having everybody be welcome. And I have to say, I appreciate also the diversity of Opera Huntsville. And also it was out when the last time I was uh, able to check you guys out, it was very educational also. Mm -hmm. uh, for someone, as I said before, my experience in opera is not great, but I can say it totally blew me away. And it was one of those things where I was really happy to check it out. So if you get a chance to see uh, performances from Opera Huntsville, definitely check them out. What advice would you give to um, a student who maybe wants to enter the field of music? Um, I know you have a lot of students and of course we're here on the campus of Alabama a and and you interact with so many students. Um, what, give, give us a couple pieces of advice for those that are watching, tuning in that want to enter into the field of 
music. Um, okay. Yeah, yeah. Give us a couple, couple things maybe that you've learned from some life lessons. Sure. So, life lessons that I've learned is you always have to be the top at your craft. Never let anybody discourage you from practicing or learning new music or getting in the practice room and going over the piece until you have it. I think there's a lot of times people want to say, okay, that's enough. I think I have it. When somebody who has spent more time in the practice room than you have may get the job instead. And so that would be my top advice is keep going. Don't stop. Is it perfect yet? No, it's not because nothing's ever perfect. Try it again. Sing in front of people. Sing it. Sing at any opportunity that you have. Just get out there, get it done, and eventually somebody's going to take notice of your work ethic, and those are the people that get hired. And so that's my top advice that I give all my students. Make sure that you are, you know what you're doing. Don't come into, especially when I teach voice lessons, they have to be prepared when they come through the door. Mm. If I say, did you practice this week? It better be a yes. If it's a no, then what are we going to do? How can I teach you if you aren't doing things on your, on your end? And so keep going, practice, get in the, get in the practice room, do what you need to do. And the, the jobs will follow. True. Now, Sierra, as we're wrapping everything up, Let's talk once, let's go back to Dream Girls once again. What information do our uh, listeners and viewers need to know once again about the upcoming performance of Dream Girls that we want folks that are listening to us right now, check out. I know it's gonna be one heck of a show. I've had the opportunity to see some of the pictures on social media, a little behind the scenes stuff that's been going on. So I know it's gonna be a great one. What do we need to know as we're wrapping everything up? I would say that if you would like to attend Dream Girls, make sure that you go online. The tickets are for sale. Uh, if you would like any assistance with the ticket purchase, you can uh, email the website, well, the email address that's on the website as well, or you can give them a call. Also, the show is recommended for teens and up, and it's sure to be a great, great opportunity. Tickets are selling fast. Make sure you get them, and I would love to see everyone at the premiere. And once again, that number for more information about the Dream Girls presentation, 256-536-0807. And Dream Girls is taking place September the 16th through the 18th and also the 22nd through the 25th of this month at the VBC Playhouse. So you definitely want to be there. It's going to be one heck of a show from the iconic to historic Dream Girls presentation. Sierra, anything else you want to throw out there? Thank you so much for having me, and I look forward to seeing everybody there. All right, thank you. And of course, once again, this was a presentation of 90.9 WJAB and WJAB.org. Thank you.